Hi and welcome to This Is Your Life. Well, it's grand final week and here we are in Melbourne to salute one of AFL's greats. A real story of guts and determination. Our guest of honour was actually sacked by his first club for being too short and slow. But he went on to play over 200 games and along the way collected the Brownlow medal and thousands of adoring fans. Unfortunately, last weekend saw his chance of playing in a grand final slip away from him again. And right now he's in a nearby dressing room with the team in a debriefing session and that's where we're going to surprise him and give him a bit of a cheer up. Come along. I think from day one we spoke about trust and, uh, and just backing ourselves in and trusting our abilities and trusting our teammates, trusting ourselves. Right, and I think that's really where we've got to go again and make sure that we really lock into that. It's, to me, it's all about unity and a real teammanship that we have around the place. And I, I just sort of think it's those sort of things that are going to get us there. have so many adoring fans out there you've got this reputation of this this aggressive defending terrier uh, <laughs> reputation of course Ted Whitten Mr. Football himself once described you as inspirational and you are also the number one hero for our first tribute guest tonight ladies and gentlemen please welcome Mr. Ernie Sigley <laughs> So what do you think of this bloke? Well, he's a, he's a fair dig, a legend. <laughs> he really is. Uh, we love him, the kids and I. We go to the footy every... I'm quite nervous. Right? <laughs> Lip, you're nervous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we go to the footy every week and we love him, you know. I think uh, Tony, without a doubt, is probably one of the three greatest footballers ever to play for Footscray. All five West, foot four of him. Of yeah, I'm taller than him too, aren't I, Lip? <laughs> Just a little bit. But he, uh, no, he's an inspiration. The club is fantastic. He's a ledge. <laughs> I think I backed him when he won the Brownlow medal. That yeah, year, didn't I? Yeah, I, yeah. I said, yeah. The Liberal will win the medal. And I said, if he doesn't, I'll be him a bum in Burke Street. He did say that. Right. You, you save people a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> ugly sights. Yeah. But well, good on you, Lip. The kids send their love. You Thanks, know. sir. He's Appreciate a legend. That. He's terrific. Thanks, yeah. sir. Good on you. Tony. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. Well, don't go away because we're about to go right back where it all began for Tony Liberatore. But first, let's hear from your childhood hero, Kevin Bartlett, and someone else who idolises you, Jeff Fennick. I think you've made everybody realise that not always a good big man can be the good small man. You've proved it time and time again that a good little man like you always beats a good big man. And if I was in the trenches with anybody, Liver, I'd like to be in there with you. Congratulations. Hope you have a great night. You're one hell of a great athlete. Liver, congratulations and well done. Your career has been an extraordinary career. Just think, at five foot two, you are terrorising AFL football at the moment. <laughs> you the Brownlow Medal, the Gardner Medal, the Morris Medal, Best and Fairest Awards, and of course, representing Victoria. It has been an incredible career. And I know that everyone right around Australia admires you greatly for the great things that you have done and certainly you are a bulldog legend and let's hope that you can play many many more games good luck and enjoy your night Antonio Liberatore, your story begins in 1951 when your father Tullio moves to Australia from poverty-stricken Italy. 
He first lives in a migrant camp before he finds work in a Melbourne textile factory and marries your mum, Maria. They settle into a West Brunswick Housing Commission home and start raising their family. And it's certainly one very happy household on the 11th of February 1966 when twin boys, Alfredo and Antonio, are born. I was the size of a barrel, but oh beauty, I had two more little Aussie. It's your ma, pa, brother John and sister Linda. Maria, you must be awfully proud of this bambino, the, the youngest in the family. I am so proud. <laughs> he was always good in everything he did. He was always play footballs when he was younger with uh, passion and determination. And I believe a lot of windows were broken yes, during those early years. Yes, in the house. But we love you so much, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Julio, is it true that you and Maria have been to every game, every game Tony has ever played? Yeah, most of the games, yes, nearly every game. How many is that? Four hundred, five hundred. <laughs> and John, it's a, it's a typically huge Italian family, isn't it? Yeah, ours is a big family. Um, Dad is one of five and Mum is one of thirteen. So there is a, there's a lot of uncle and aunties to sort of go around. And um, I think it's maybe one day Tony's wish to meet them all. <laughs> Pasta bean, no, no, I reckon. And, and, and with that many, you'd need the time too, wouldn't you? Yeah, certainly. Yeah, yeah. they're all over in, in Italy, most. Of them. Oh, yeah, only one, one, one of Mum's sisters are here in Australia. So, and Linda, I believe in the early years, Tony wasn't exactly a good loser. Oh, absolutely not, Mike. No, he'd be shocking if they'd lost a game. He would just be in there. You couldn't speak to him. He couldn't answer any of your questions. He just was so. Um, focused on winning and if they lost a game he was to. As, as you can see by that photo there um, no he's when he lost he wasn't a happy boy that's for sure <laughs> well thank you very much for all joining us we appreciate it thanks, thanks a lot thank now of course we haven't forgotten someone else who's busting to come through these doors and everyone says I'm the better looking one <laughs> It's your older twin brother by just 10 minutes, Fred. <laughs> now, you guys have always been pretty competitive, haven't you? Very competitive, right from the start, Mike. Yeah. yeah. You played footy together? Played first. footy, yeah. I ended up changing sports and ventured into wrestling, and um, I think I got a bit better looks than Tony has. <laughs> We've got a photo to prove that, haven't, haven't we? Yeah, this is some yeah. of this photo we've got here. Oh, nice, Lord. <laughs> well, that was what, against Geelong last yeah, year? Yeah, last year, yep. Nice look. <laughs> nice look. <laughs> yeah. and, and also, your characters are pretty similar, though, aren't Very they? Very similar. Yeah, we... Are they? <laughs> <laughs> We both like being competitive and uh, actually it was funny, we, we had a maths exam together and we both got exactly the same score and... Because uh, I gave him my, my sheets. <laughs> the, the teacher decided to separate us and mum got called in and uh, mum said they're never going to be separated as twins so they always belong with each other. <laughs> and, and were you cheating? No. <laughs> he was cheating off me. Actually. Oh, okay. Well, we certainly won't, we'll certainly won't separate you for uh, for a little while. Please take right. a seat. Take okay. a seat. <laughs> Tony, as you grow up, there's no pocket money, but football's cheap, and it soon starts to rule your life. Now, school grades are okay, but at Brunswick City Football Club, you are top <laughs> of the class. Even at nine years of age. <laughs> Even at nine years of age, you're known for your spirited defence and scrambling. You also get your first taste of racial prejudice. Now, tell us what happened there. Oh, yeah, we, I, playing, I think it was the under nines or under elevens, and uh, this guy kept on yelling out from over the fence, kept on calling me a wog, and I thought, I wonder what that means. And <laughs> I went up to the coach later after the game, so what does wog mean? He said, don't worry, son, just keep playing footy, don't worry about it. So, 
Well, as a teenager, that same coach admires how you can single-handedly turn a game around. And you haven't seen him, that first coach, who's not very well, by the way, for 20 years. But there's no way that Tom Bevis was going to miss tonight. Now, you started this bloke off, is that right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Did you recognise his talent straight away, Tom? Oh, I knew he was all right. Just all yeah. right? <laughs> For the start, eh? yeah. We knew later what he was like. What, what, what did you see that he had? What oh, was it? Well, he, he wanted to get up the football all the time and give it, he didn't want to give it to anyone else but himself. <laughs> Tom, thank you very much for okay. coming out for us. We really okay. appreciate it. Thank you. And coming up after the break, Tony Liberatore tackles his way to the top. But first, another big fan. G'day, Tony Libertore. Sorry, buddy, I can't be there. I wish I could, but I still remember when I first met you. After we've been talking for about five minutes, <laughs> I'd had you up to here. <laughs> I wish I could be there, but I can't. But have a great night, and you're a champion. All the best. Now, where were we? Right. I wasn't there! <laughs> I wasn't there! I want to hear, mate. I wasn't there! You were so! I was not! We love your liver. On your liver. <laughs> Welcome back to our tribute to AFL's little big man, Tony Liberatore. Tony, it's 1983, you're 17 and selected to train with North Melbourne under-19s. You play in two grand finals, win best and fairest, and by 1985, you are the captain. Now, you think you're on your way, but your world caves in when you're sacked. Due to your height and size, the club believes you have no place in the big league. Now, is it true that that day you actually went home and broke down? Oh yeah, I guess so. I mean, every sort of kid's ambition is to play AFL footy and yeah, it was pretty disappointing, yeah. Well, after much despair, Footscray allows you to train in their squad. But it's not until halfway through the 1986 season, you're about 20, when you get to play. And most at Footscray don't like your size either. You play in the seconds. And during the 1988 and 89 seasons, you play only two senior games. So you're a player no one really wants, and now playing for a club fighting for its own survival. And it was at this low point that you confide in your good friend, Doug Hawkins, who sends you this message. Liver, in 1989, we sat there in the Footscray Footy Club gym there, we chatted about your future. You said, Dougie, it was all over. I said, listen, mate, hang in there. Who knows what could happen in 1990? In my eyes, you are a legend, you are a champion. To your wife, Jane, and your family, and of course, to you, Liver, have a super night, mate. You deserve it. Because, mate, I love you dearly, bro. You're a great man, Liver. Nice message, eh? Huh? Yeah, good nice message. Yeah. Then, when you're 24, everything turns around. Despite your size, you more than prove yourself as one of the game's greats. In 1990, Footscray, once again, after 30 years in the wilderness, becomes a major force, largely thanks to you now playing in the firsts. So in the space of just 12 months, you go from almost giving the game up to playing in your first full season. And then you win the biggest individual award in the AFL. The 90 Brownlow medal is Tony Liberatore, Footscray. What a magnificent uh, year it's been for Footscray. They have come back from the dead. Surely this is going to be one of the most popular brown low medal winners in the history of the game. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank my mother and father who have just supported me all the way through football. My fiancée, Jane O'Donnell, for all the support she's given me. And of course, sharing that night and many more is your now wife, Jane. <laughs> Now, how did you two meet? 
Well, we actually met in a, at a nightclub and I gave Tony my phone number and uh, I didn't actually hear from him for a while and then we <laughs> bumped into each other in the city one night. At a nightclub. <laughs> and um, he said he actually did want to ring me but um, the, the piece of paper that I'd written, written the phone number down on was in his jeans pocket. His mother actually washed his jeans. <laughs> well, we're told that there's a particular superstition that you have before every game. The superstition where you don't do anything, anything particular the Not night no before? Not for a game, no. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. It's very un-Italian, Tony. <laughs> but does he never Would make exceptions? Never. I think we tried once, but I'll play shit out. <laughs> Well, throughout the 90s, you're playing a major role in the Bulldogs' turnaround. If Liberatory fires both physically and verbally, so does the team. In the last two years, you've come so close to realising your childhood dream of one day playing in a grand final and perhaps winning it. And every much a part of that dream are your coach, Terry Wallace, captain, Scott Wine, and teammates, Paul DiMartina and Jose Romero. <laughs> Okay, guys, why the hats? Uh, we're known as the Three Amigos. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Jose, he's always been a big talker, hasn't he? Oh, look, he's got, he's got an exceptional mouth. <laughs> 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 he never shuts up on the ground, and uh, sometimes as a teammate, you, uh, you feel like leaning over and saying, shut up yourself. So. <laughs> Scott, how do you find this bloke off the field? Yeah, well, he's, uh, I tell you what, he's the only person I know who uh, shaves five minutes before he goes out, yet still comes home looking like an Arab terrorist. <laughs> Jerry, how do you find this bloke? Well, I suppose I've always sort of said that the, uh, the players are the bricks of the side, and I think Tony's really the mortar that holds our team together, and you know, he's been an absolute inspiration to everyone at the football club. His dedication, his hardness, and his desperation on the ground, it's been fantastic. He's the only player in the competition history that's won a, uh, a medal at all three levels, and he's just a credit to himself and his family. Yeah, Thanks, fantastic. Tony. And coming up after the break, the big surprises for Tony Liberatore. But first, let's hear from a couple of close friends. When we think of Tony Liberatore, we think of the word desire. It is the greatest motivating force there is. And if you really want something badly enough, you can achieve it. Congratulations and best wishes tonight, son. We all know just how amazing Tony is with his footy. Well, he's exactly the same with children who are suffering juvenile diabetes. Everything Tony does, he does from his heart. Tony, you are an inspiration to me personally, your family, friends, and in fact, just about everyone who knows you. God bless. Love you, Tony. Go, doggies. Welcome back to our salute to AFL great Tony Liberatore. Tony, this year we witness other milestones. First, there is your 200th game. Then, only two weeks later, your left knee collapses, requiring total reconstruction. You're told you could be out for 12 months. But again, defying all the odds, you somehow recover in just four months. And once again, begin your assault on this year's Premiership. And always there supporting you, as we can hear, are your beautiful children, Chris, Tom and little Meg. Hello. Now I believe you, Tom, are pretty uh, pretty good at uh, knowing all the players and their numbers in the AFL. Yeah. True. How good are you? Pretty good. Can I give you? What? Can I give you a test? Yes. Okay. Who is number? 43 for Carlton. 
Good face. Oh, beautiful. Spot on. Here's a hard one. Number 16 for Essendon. Barnard. Pretty good. Pretty good. A little banter. Thanks, guys, and thank you very much for joining us. That was very, very good. All right, go and have, have a take your seat. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt about it, Tony. For you, family is first, and football is second. The only trouble is, there's a few relatives in Italy you've never met. Two of them are your uncle and aunt, uh, your dad's brother and sister. All the way from Italy, Giuseppe and Consiglia Liberatore. <laughs> They have never been out of Thank Italy you. before. Thank you. They have never been on an aeroplane before. And they're still working on their English. Tony, with your tenacious spirit and passion, you've risen to become one of Aussie Rules' great heroes. You're a perfect example of what someone can do when they totally believe in themselves and go through all the hard yakka to achieve it. And that you have. Tony Liberatore, this is your life. Our guests choose to stay at the Grand Hyatt.